Hello and welcome to the second part of my series about building a web API with Rust using Actix and Diesel. In the previous part we've seen how to set up the project and that's where we are. We updated the TOML file as you can see. Now we'll have to integrate the database. It is not too difficult. The first thing we'll do is add a new file to our project called .n do it this way and in that file we put this database url equals database underscore url equals postgres because that is the type of database we're using a username a password I'm running at localhost. I'm calling the database Rust API tutorial. We'll save it by Ctrl or Command S. And then we go to our admin tool, PG Admin. We click right click on the database as we built a new database called Rust API Tutorial. Make sure we can reach the save button. And there we are. Sorry about that. Next what we do is we go into the terminal, right here, and we say diesel setup. There we go. Migration directory is added. Put some migrations here. We'll, be, we'll add our own migrations later on. Well, later on is actually now. Diesel migration generate create events. Create events is the name of the migration, not the name of the table, mind you. And as you can see, create events is created. It has some prefixes like the date and the time. And let's have a look at the app.sql file. This is where you put all the code that is needed to perform the migration. The down.sql is used to roll back the migration. Well, for this uh, example, it is pretty simple. Let's remove this. We create an events table with an ID, which is a serial, which means it's incremented automatically every time you insert a row. There's a name, a description, and location, all of which are texts, and they are required, though they're not null. We'll save this, and we'll go to the down SQL. It's always handy to the down sequel as well in case you need to roll back and this simply drops the events table now we can run our migration diesel migration run and let's see whether we succeeded at the rust api tutorial go into the schemas tables yes columns are there We succeeded on that part. I'll close this one because we're not going to need it for this the rest of this project, I think. Let me go to the diesel.toml file, which is generated by diesel. Let me say, put a schema.rs, which was also created by diesel, in the models directory. To do that, we need to create a models directory. And we, sorry, we simply drag 
schema.rs into the model selector. It's got a refactoring in Rust Rover. Next, we add a mod.rs file. This is used so Rust can see which modules are in the directory and we have an event module and the schema. Event is colored red as you can see because we've not made it yet but we'll make sure we can do that right now. So we add an event.rs file in that we use the to the preliminaries which are the 30 and the diesel queryable insertable as change it as change it is needed it's not quite obvious for updating entities in the database queryable and insertable are self-explanatory i think then we make our first struct this, the event struct i'll describe it is uh, consists of an ID, which is an I32, a name, description, and location, all of which are strings. This to be queryable, serializable, and deserializable. Debug and clone are just for utility purposes. As chain set, because we need to update the thing, and insertable. And we need to be able to uh, look at the events table, hence the table name. We also need a second struct. Why do we need a second struct if we only have one table? Well, we need to insert new entities. Otherwise, our web API wouldn't be much use. And that is a new event struct. And I'll make sure I'll make it complete. Also, this is serializable and deserializable. It's insertable. You don't need to query it. It has the same table name. And it has, it's the same, in fact, as the event. It's missing the ID component, ID field, because if we are inserting a new event, we don't know the ID beforehand, so we don't need to insert it. It might even cause an error in Postgres. Let's save this. Go back to the mod.rs and we attach it to main.rs. Let's see if we can build it. Cargo build. Yeah, it works. Good. Well, we're doing quite well. Now we need to be able to talk to the database, which is always nice. So we create a repository directory in our source directory. There we are. And we create a database.rs file right here. Well, before everything, we need to import and use some things. I'll just copy and paste them. The mouse is acting strangely. What we see here is the diesel prelude, which is basically the basis of diesel. We need R2D2, 
for connection pooling and we need the dot env uh, crate to make sure that we can read the environment file in which we have defined our database URL which is needed later on. Next we need our event and new event structs and we need to have the DSL, the domain specification language which was also generated by Diesel. Next we define a simple type, well simple, we define the DB pool and we define a database struct. So far so good. All the database struct has is a pool of type DB pool. Now we need to implement the database. We start by building the constructor. I call it a constructor, it's not officially called a constructor, but it's new. What does this do? First of all, it looks whether we can read the environment. Then it reads the database URL, if there is one. If there isn't one, it panics. Then we build the uh, pool using the database URL and R2D2. And then we return a database with the pool. Next, we want to have a list of events always handy. Now remove this new line here. We use the events uh, variable or type. Let's see what it is. Let's find it first. Go to type declaration. It doesn't give anything. Just an object apparently. Not sure what it is actually, but it works. We load the events with the pool. We need to get the pool, uh, we need to get the connection from the pool. That is what the get does. And then it needs to unwrap in case we don't have a connection or all the connections are faulty or basically anything wrong. And if that goes wrong, it panics. The load event returns a vector of events, so that's what you see here. Next we want to get an event by a specific ID. Let's have a look at that. This gets an ID as its parameter, the find ID, find underscore ID, and returns an option. Why an option? Because I might pass an ID that doesn't exist. Uh, so that's why it's an option. It's the same here, we get a connection from the pool, we use the find method on the events uh, type, the events variable, that's it. But before we can do all of this, we need to be able to create an event. That's why we use the create event method for. This gets a new event, as I mentioned before, without an ID, to be inserted into the database. It returns either the event that is created, so we see the new ID, or we have an error, and that is the result type, which is very, very handy. We use um, a static function static method, I should say, insert into, into the events table. We get the values, which is just one in this case. And then we uh, use the connection to insert the event. We use more or less the same structure when we want to delete an event. There it is. 
again delete from the events and we need to filter by the ID and then we execute it on the connection. And last but not least, we need to update events. We need to be able to update events if needed. Again, the same structure, we use the update methods from diesel on the events table. And then we get the result and we set the event to the event. Mind you, this is a full event because we need to know the idea of the event to be updated. To round it all off, off I should say, we should also add a mod.rs file here. We say pub mod database. And I call it. And we need to attach this to the main as well. We say save all. And let's see whether this still builds. It complains about methods not being used. That is okay. They will be used in the handler in the next part of the series, the web handler. Okay. This is it for this part of the series. Next time we'll be defining the web API using Actix and then it will get interesting, really interesting. <laughs>